Earlier this year, I took the time to take stock of just how many games I had sat unplayed in my collection. I'm sure you are all in the same boat as me in that sometimes you grab something on sale because the price is right, you are gifted things by generous and or malicious friends, or titles just appear in your digital library, like phantoms gathering around the victim of a terrible curse. To put things lightly, discounting Game Pass and itch.io bundles and restricted to just what platforms I'm currently playing on, I have 165 games in my backlog. 165 games that have been left unplayed up until now, with a combined total average playtime of nearly 5,000 hours. That's a staggering number, one that almost nauseates me to think about. Taking stock of what little free time I have now, and in conversation with my many, many other hobbies, I know all too well that there is absolutely no chance that I will see even a fraction of what these titles have to offer anytime soon, but it just does not sit right with me to leave them as they are. Untouched. Unloved. What am I missing out on by condemning the past to rot? Inspired majorly by a recent somewhat doomed backlog project by the YouTube channel Daryl Talks Games, I started cataloguing what I had that had not been touched, making a delicious spreadsheet of each game, how long it would roughly take to finish, and my potential enthusiasm for playing it. The end result was intimidating for sure. In those videos that inspired me, Daryl concludes that attempting to clear your backlog is an exercise in frustration and misery. Getting caught up in a project like this can only lead to thinking it a second job a chore rather than a joy. It wasn't a good fit for him, even if it did grant him a newfound appreciation for how he spends his free time. However, in all my arrogant wisdom, I decided that maybe there's a way to make a project like this work. There's no way in hell I'll be able to finish all of these games for sure, but what if that wasn't the goal? What if, instead of trying to beat these games, I instead spent my time with them trying to see if they could evoke in me what was found in them by others? For many of these titles I have a good idea of what to expect, but for others there is a plethora of good writing out there about them that I can refer to if needed. Maybe I'll finish some of these games? Maybe I part ways before the conclusion? In all cases, I might gain something from the experience that isn't so crassly dominated by an obsession with completion. So here's the plan. I have divided my collection based on average time to beat into weekly, monthly and three monthly categories. For each quarter I will play 12 short games, one per week, three medium length titles, one per month, and one game that requires a bit of investment to really get to the meat of. The goal here then is not to complete each game unless I find myself enthralled enough to do so, but instead to keep playing until I get a sense of what its creators were trying to evoke. Towards the end of March I will publish the first of four video diaries chronicling my findings thus far, at which point, if this does indeed turn out to be a bad idea, I will then revisit the structure of this project. But the idea behind its formation is that it should slot in nicely around everything else I want to do with my free time. Not a burden, but a virtue. Well, until Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out, in which case all bets are off. In total, this project includes 63 titles from my original list of 165, picked out for a number of reasons, including their potential interest to you, dear audience, and of course me. There are some classics in the mix, but also a fair number of titles that I don't hear talked about, and honestly can't remember when and why I picked them up in the first place. There's a good chance that not all of these games will provide the opportunity for fruitful analysis. Looking at my list, there's a few that seem downright trashy, but the impetus of this project is that I just don't know what to expect. Any one of these 63 entries has the potential for being my favourite game of all time, something I end up thinking about for years to come. How much of the creative output of others we end up dismissing for virtue of being suffocated by the allure of the new, the shiny, the overconfident and the popular. As I mentioned in my recent update video, this is not the only thing I will be doing this year. I already have another video in the works that I'll probably release in the next few weeks, and a couple of other projects I need to take off the back burner for the coming months, but this is something I've wanted to do for a while. I hope that my daring hubris does not come back to haunt me. I hope I have thought about this enough to make it work. But beyond anything else, I hope it's interesting as a piece of work to engage with. If you would like to play along with me, here's what's on the list for the first three months of this project. My weekly games for January will be Alan Wake's American Nightmare, Wonder Song, Gato Roboto, and Onichambra Z2 Chaos. My game for the month of January will be Arx Fatalis. My weekly games for February will be Call of Juarez Gunslinger, Lunastis, 
Deltarune chapters 1 and 2, and even the ocean. My game for the month of February will be Left Alive. My weekly games for March will be The Final Station, Westerado, Untitled Goose Game, and God's Trigger. My game for the month of March will be Hotel Dusk Room 215. My long-term game for the first quarter of 2024 will be Kerbal Space Program. Right, see you in about three months then. Well, I mean, please watch my other videos in the meantime. Cheerio!